Hello, Anselm Griffin here again with another YouTube tutorial featuring MATLAB. Today we're looking at Kramer's rule, trying to solve unknowns for a 3x3 three three matrix. And we're going to be using just some fairly simple MATLAB commands. So, assumption one, we're familiar with matrix. Number two, we're familiar with Kramer's rule. Number three, you're familiar with MATLAB. And number four, you're familiar with for loops. So, I just took that there from Checks, so that's the general solution and I'm not going to go through it I assume if you're here you know what's going on so there's a problem and I took that problem from saddlebackmath.com so we have there x minus y plus 2z equals minus 3 x plus 2y plus 3z equals 4 and 2x plus y plus z equals minus 3 and if we just scroll down here a little bit, we have the solutions done there. So that's how you would do it by hand, I assume. That's okay, and we're just going to do it in MATLAB now. So we clear the screen, we clear all the variables, and we close any open figures. I've declared the arrays there, what I'm going to be using it for. So I'm using the problem from saddleback mat so I declared the array A and remember each row is with a semicolon so 1 minus 1 2 is the coefficients of x1 y1 z1 semicolon the next line 1 2 3 which is x2 y2 z2 semicolon and 2 1 1 is x3 y3 z3 and b small b is the right hand side the matrix of constants I want to check for singularity because if debt A is zero, well then the whole thing just collapses. So how do you say is equal to zero? Double equal sign. And if that's true, you want the program to end. So you kick out an error message matrix singular. On square brackets, i, j equals size A, that gets the size. So i is the number of rows, j is the number of columns, and that's going to be a three by three. We set up a little for loop there so for k equals i for k equals 1 to i so that's 1 to 3 b equals a so remember a is the original array, array there 1 minus 1 2 1 2 3 and 2 1 1 and then what we have to do is slot in the relevant right hand side that's the matrix of constants into it so on the first go there, B roundy brackets colon K, so that's all the rows column K, which is all the rows column 1. We slip in B, and B there is minus 3, 4, minus 3. Um, that's B roundy brackets colon K equals small b. I just said get that B, and I left off the semicolon just to display it. So if we just look at that, so there's under there the first b minus three minus one two four two minus three minus three one minus one and the debt of that is 36. go back to the loop again go back to that for loop and just there before the end we solve for x k so that'll be x one so that'll be the uh, for the x's and that's debt b over debt a we go around the loop again, so k is now 2, b equals a, so we reset b to a, and then all the rows column 2 is um, equal to lowercase b. Then we get the debt of b, the new b, that is debt of large b, and then we get the x of k, and this will be the x of 2, and that's the debt of b over the debt of a, and we look down here, we see uh, for the second B, it's 1 minus 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, and 2, 3 minus 1. So that's the second column is the right hand side, and the first column is the original X's, and the third column is the original Z's. The determinant of that is minus 24, and we say minus 24 over uh, debt A, and I can't remember debt A, I think it's 36, but something like doesn't matter. So we do that, we go around the loop again, so that's up to where we are there, 
a k is now 3 we loop around again and we solve for the unknown uh, term of z we did an f print f there and so the solution to x is minus 3 we popped in x1 for x2 f print f the solution to y is percent 0.2 f so we're pr printing to two decimal places of x2 so that's 2 I think I said 36 it must be 12 because 24 over 12 is 2 and then the solution to z is x3 and that's 1 okay so hope that helps a little and thanks very much for listening